everybody and welcome. As Stacy said, my name is Angie Caruso. And um, one of the reasons I became a registered dietitian is that I love to talk about food and nutrition, but more importantly, I love to eat good food. And I wanna share the message that you can eat tasty food and tasty does equal healthy. So one of the most important messages that I'd like to leave you with tonight is that people with diabetes can enjoy all foods. And the key really is moderation. Having three regular meals a day is one of the first steps to help control your blood sugar. It can prevent um, you from going low. Um, it can prevent us from overeating at our next meal. So, you know, how many of us have missed a lunch because we're running around and we walk through the front door and the first thing we see, we grab, we eat, and we tend to overeat because we're super hungry. So that's one of the main goals of keeping blood sugar in control. Snacks if needed. So we often get this question, should I have a snack? Should I not have a snack? Well, that really depends on a few things. If you're hungry in between your meals, you can have a snack. And we'll talk more about snacks in a bit. Um, if you're having a low, which again, Catherine touched on in between your meals, then you definitely will need a snack between those meals. And it can also prevent you from overeating at your next meal. So it can help with hunger control. So the timing of those meals, um, generally, just again, these are guidelines. So meals, we look at four to six hours apart between breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So even if you're on shift work, I mean, the example here says breakfast 7 a.m., lunch at one, and dinner at six. But if you have breakfast at midnight, because you start working at one in the morning, the same guidelines would apply. You just shift your time. And again, if you do need a snack, then good timing is two to three hours before your meal or after your meal. So I'll ask you, and Catherine did mention one of the food nutrients, when you sit down to eat, what are the three main groups of foods? Can you, uh, you can yell it out if you want. Proteins, carbohydrates, fats. Okay, so we've got them all. Protein, fat, and carbohydrate. And which of these nutrients would affect your blood sugar? Are your carbs? What about, sorry? And fat. And fat. Okay, so of these three, it's just the carbohydrate that raises your blood sugar. Protein and fat do not raise your blood sugar. If we have too much of them, they can increase our weight and they can affect our cholesterol levels. So we'll talk about each nutrient. We'll spend a bit more time talking about carbohydrate, uh, but we'll go through protein and fat. So let's start with protein. Maybe you can name uh, some protein foods. And again, you can just shout them out. What are some foods that are mostly proteins? Eggs, cheese, kind of hard to hear. Meat, yeah, legumes and pulses, right, okay. So we've got a good bunch of them there. Uh, fish, wasn't maybe it was mentioned, I just can't hear that far. Uh, peanut butter, eggs, soy products. And in the box, in the blue box, you'll see uh, that these are foods that also contain carbohydrates. So milk and yogurt and the legumes, which was called out, also contain carbs. So when we look at our proteins, again, they do not raise blood sugar, but we still need to be careful about the amount. So when you look at um, meat and chicken, you're looking at lean cuts, and you're looking at three to four ounces per meal. We're trying to encourage people to eat more fish, so two to three times a week, and we'll talk about omega-3 fatty acids later on. Cheese, about 30 grams of cheese is a serving, or two tablespoons of peanut butter, just to give you an idea, or, or an egg. So we need to have protein at two out of our three meals, and it can actually help keep your blood sugar more stable when you combine it with carbohydrate at your meal. For the foods in the box, if for instance, um, if you're a vegetarian or if you're just trying to increase the beans that you have in your diet, something you just wanna be um, aware of is if I'm gonna replace my chicken or beef with legumes like kidney beans or chickpeas or lentils or dal, then maybe I need to reduce the other carbohydrates in that meal, so the rice that I'm having with it, or the pasta, for instance. Okay, so our next nutrient is fat. So if you could name out some foods that are mostly fats. Butter, cheese, 
margarine. Yep. Okay, all the oils. Right, so we have our fat foods, which again do not raise blood sugar, but just as proteins, we need to watch the amount that we have in a day. Um, so we have our vegetable oils, our oil-based salad dressings, margarine, the non-hydrogenated, avocado, olives, nuts and seeds. And then on the right, we have butter, lard, mayonnaise, sour cream, cream cheese, cream and bacon. Is there any difference between the left and the right hand side of the screen? Yeah. Yes, yeah. what would that be? Yeah. Right, so what Sue said is we, we have a difference of ones with higher saturated fat and one ones with less. So on the left, we have our choose more often fats. These are the fats that you want to include as part of your diet on a regular basis. And on the right, it's our choose less often fats, things that we don't choose regularly. So in a day, you need approximately three to six servings of added fat. And to give you an idea of what a serving is, it's about a teaspoon of oil or salad dressing or margarine. Uh, if you cut an avocado up into six pieces, it's one piece of of avocado. Um, now on the right, with the foods that are the choose less often, there are many options in the grocery store now, right? A lot of food companies are, they've made light choices, and when you cook with a lot of them, you really can't tell the difference. So there's the light mayonnaise or light sour cream and light cream cheeses to try. We know that fats don't raise blood sugar, but they do affect our heart health, and heart health is linked to diabetes. So two of the main things to consider when you're choosing a fat, well one is reducing our total fat intake, even if it's a healthy fat. So even if it's on the choose more often side, we wanna reduce that down to that three to six servings a day. And secondly is to choose those healthier fats more often. So the choose more often are what we call unsaturated fats. And in that category, there's mono and poly. Don't worry about the mono and the poly. If you see the UN, un, you're in a good place. So you'll find a lot of those healthier fats in the vegetable oils, like canola and olive oil, avocados, um, and omega-3s. How many people here have heard of omega-3 fatty acids? Quite a few. They're getting um, a lot of press in the last few years because we don't get enough in our diet, so a lot more attention has been paid to omega-3 fatty acid. The best source is found in our fatty fish that we eat, and uh, again, we're trying to encourage people to eat fish more often. So those fatty fish would be your salmon, herring, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, those types of fish. And flaxseed oil, for example, or flaxseed that's crushed. So you have to crush it to get the omega-3 out. If you just have the seed, it just goes in one end, in one end and out the other. So it's good for fiber, but you're not going to get the omega-3 out of there. So the second type of fat is the saturated fat, and I've, I heard a few people saying those are the saturated fats, those are the chews less often. These are the fats that tend to clog our arteries. They build up and clog, and they raise our cholesterol. They're mostly found in animal products, so things like cheese and butter, cream and meat. How many people have heard of trans fats? That's another one that's getting a lot of media attention, and a lot of food companies are reformulating their products to remove trans fat. And this is a fairly new fat, actually, in the market, when you think about the history of eating. Um, and we made this by transforming a liquid oil into a solid. Well, why would they do that? They did that because, or food companies did this, because it helps keep foods on the shelf longer, so it preserves them, makes them crispy, uh, shiny, and um, that's a good thing for a food company, but it's not good for our arteries. So that's usually used in things like cookies and croissants, uh, chips, and a lot of the hydrogenated margarines. There are three main things that a carbohydrate can have. It can have sugar and or starch and or fiber. Sugar and starch both become energy in our body. And this is really important because before you had diabetes, or for people who don't have diabetes, do we need energy to walk, talk, think, and do what we need to do in the day? I see lots of nods. Okay. When you have diabetes, do you still need energy? 